Sorry about the fan in the background. Uh, now we're going to cut a turkey head uh, off so it can be freeze dried and send it to the freeze dry company where they freeze dry the heads. Now what you want to do, you want to cut and leave all these feathers to be put back on the original mount. Uh, now here's one that's done. This guy it didn't do so good of a job. All this should be still on the uh, on the neck skin. And yeah, I would have went up further, but you can see it's still mounted. Maybe he had better luck having the feathers a little bit where they stick out a little bit like that. I don't know. But I was taught to, uh, I would have went up probably about right to here on both sides. It just goes to show you. Um, but yeah, so all the... I don't get too carried away, but I will go uh, about right. Yeah, just that hairline. Not hairline, feather line. go just under these bottles. See under these bottles? Go ahead and get them too. Leave everything you can on the on the bird, you know. Maybe put a little borax on there to suck up excess blood flow maybe or something. Water might be better if you got want that option because uh, it won't stay on the feathers that good. But you can see just going around the walls. Just under the walls. Right here. The good sharp razor blade or exacto knife, I've used both. Same thing on this side. Get right below that wall there. Oops, sorry, in the frame. Get right below that wall. Make sure everything's good there. Right below that wall. Go right up the feather line. So that feather line is. Kind of tells you vaguely kind of, you know, where you want to stop. I want, I'm going to stop right in front of these. The little, little ones right here. See how that is? Stop right there. Right. That worked. Now you just uh, make sure you got this is a clean hand. I just don't want to get blood on the feathers. I don't want blood on the feathers trying to keep from it. Do it all possible. You can even skin this back a little bit. You know, it's, you just got that loose membrane just like always. So it is. I don't think it matters much as far as all the other stuff, you know, like that. I don't know if it really matters where you cut it, per se. <clears throat> I mean, it's going on the insert anyway is what I'm getting at. But I'll probably cut it about right here. You use a hacksaw, bolt cutters. I've used both. Got a permanent marker that says flying on it. And 
I don't know if it makes a difference. Somebody wanted to wash the head off a little bit or something. And get some of the blood off maybe. I don't know. They probably do that a little bit anyway. He's a little guy. He doesn't have much of a snoot at all. But if he, when he's flying, they'll, they'll freeze, freeze dry him, and it's going to be about like that. That's how it's going to look. So he's going to kind of lay over to one side on the beak. But we put it in the sandwich bag, mark flying with a permanent marker. Try to be neat with it. There's not a lot of blood on everything. It's easier said than done. And if your birds are strutting or gobbling, just put it on your sandwich bag. Freeze it real good. Send it next day air. That's what you gotta do. Freeze it real good, send it next day air. Now there's some good companies out there. Just make sure it's a permanent marker because I've had them call me where my, my ink is smudged actually. And have to re uh, and just extra aggravation. Just make sure it's a permanent mark. Okay, I've got a scale here, and it's what I use. Uh, I just weigh my turkeys, put them in the freezer, and that way you don't have to worry about skinning them out. You know, to get a body or anything. Just go ahead and weigh him and put him in the freezer and, and, and write down what your weight is. Okay, we're weighing this guy and he's between 25 and 20 pounds. About 23 pounds, I guess. Yeah, you can even double check the length and circumference, you know, later when you skin your bird out if you want to. Okay, like say you weighed a bird that was like, oh, 17 half, 18 pounds. Well, so happens I got one right here. Okay, just you know a body. Uh, this for a small turkey. Um, okay, say I had one that weighed about seventeen and a half pounds. I'd look over here, and I'd see that uh, yeah, for standing or strutting, seventeen. Yeah, seventeen and a half pounds. It falls into that category. Uh, for standing or strutting, it should be a length of 12 and 3 fourths by 24. And it looks about like almost 12 and 3 fourths, wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely over 12. For the circumference, it's supposed to be about 24 according to the thing. I got about uh, a little over 23. It looks like about 20... 23 and a half or something like that so that's pretty close to what's considered just a small bird for flying it'd be perfect and uh, you know make the neck about two-thirds the length of the body so the neck could go at about right uh, about two-thirds about right in there and uh, that'd make a perfect flying body so yeah you just get your length and your motor you just weigh it the length of measurement is going to add up for you if you weigh it. You just weigh the bird and you know what body you've got to get. That That's it. Okay, now we're waiting on the turkey head. Go ahead and put your bird back in the freezer. Like with the deer antlers or anything else, you want to make sure uh, you have it labeled. Right, this bird is fine. I'm going to put some white paint on there and put flying. Okay. I've also got it marked towards the top, but uh, flying. And the name of the guy. And you can even use numbers, you know, like I do on my deer antlers. Uh, you can do all that stuff, depending on how much business you get. If you don't get a lot of business, 
you probably get a if you get like two or three turkeys in probably put flying or something like that the guy's name you ought to be good to go you can even use a numbered tag system where there's no way in case the guy brought in two or three turkeys you know you never know they do deer that way they might bring you two or three deer and they kill two acorners you don't want to get them mixed up in other words just make sure you do it right A lot of times I wrap them up in masking tape. I let the tail hang out because I don't like the end of the feathers being hookered up. I really don't like that. So I tend to let the tail hang out and strategically, and if you ain't got a lot of business it don't hurt, but uh, hurt is bad. But I strategically place it in the freezer where those feathers are not going to get hookered up. And then you can even put something else like cardboard on the end of these feathers. I've done that before to keep them. I hate the ends of them getting boogered up, is what I'm getting at. And if the customer does it before he brings it to you, at least it's not your fault. You know what I mean? And then I run him to the freezer. I've got uh, I've got the two part epoxy sculpt. Okay, I've got two equal parts. One's kind of a dark gray, and the other is kind of like light gray. That's that epoxy sculpt. Then I just mix it together. I use lacquer thinner; it seems to help. Kind of thin it down real good, and kind of work it in. Got my lacquer thinner. A little more of my lacquer thinner. Squirt it in. Thin it down, make it work good and smooth and easy to work with. Oh yeah, see that's getting real soft. Yeah, it's getting where it work with it real good. Okay, this side has a little bit of damage on the head as you can see. And uh, all we do is get a little epoxy sculpt and get it in there. Okay, get a little bit of my epoxy cold mixture and I just get a little bit and got a little bit of damage right in here so I just fill in them holes and this is just that epoxy sculpt I think they got a sculpt all and all that heck if a person had time they could probably even use uh, a little bit of caulk or something you know, if they're going to paint it white and then, you know, before they start painting and stuff. Then you just smoothen that over with a cotton tip with a little bit of lacquer thinner over the top of it. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, we got a little bit of a mess right here. Yeah. A little bit of a shot hole. A little bit right here is a shot hole. A little bit right there. And uh, show you what we do next. We just get a Q-tip. Okay, just get a little bit of lacquer thinner and squirt it on my Q-tip. And I go through here and uh, just, just kind of flush everything in. Um, you know, it's going to be painted anyway. But yeah, you definitely want to make sure you get it in all those holes and. Kind of cover up what's going to get painted, in other words. You're just, uh, between the lacquer thinner and the epoxy sculpt and the hole it, itself, you know, you'll fill it in, kind of flush it in, make it look good. In other words, you'll make it work. But there you go. It's that simple. Just kind of... As you can see, there's a bad hole right here, and I kind of worked it in. 
I made it look as natural as I could and filling in with the natural grooves of the head itself and uh, well that's kind of what you come up with and uh, you know, I just paint over it. What I've got, I've got just off of What I'm going to do is just put a kind of a light coat, especially over the white areas. Just kind of lighten everything up. up all this back here. Get about a medium coat, medium variety. And you don't you don't paint the beak at all. You stay off the beak. You can actually see what's supposed to be red and what's not as far as the neck. So that kind of helps. You can see what's supposed to be red and what's supposed to be white. It's all here. You know, we're you whiten everything up, but not to the point where you can't, you know, exactly make out what's supposed to be red and what's not. Is the right word. That's what I'm trying to say. Go ahead and get your suit smooth. Okay, same with this one, there's just a mild coating of white. And the main thing is, uh, try to, when you get to smooth, if you get any on the, on the beak itself, you want to use like this energy to get it off. And uh, we'll show you that in a little bit. That's a really good head right here for the most part. Got one little bad spot up there. Make sure it's smooth as good as white. And I'll show you what we do next. Okay, uh, before we go off on the next color, I want to kind of clean the beak off. I mean, it's supposed to be clean anyway.
Okay, we're going to our next color. Our next color is Payne's Gray. Well, first, before we use our Payne's Gray, I'm going to go ahead and clean the eyes off. I got a little bit of overspray, uh, just like I did on the beak. I got a little overspray. So, uh, good thing Q-tips are cheap. So you clean both eyes off, and uh, if you get any overspray, it's going to be dark overspray, I think. But yeah, you just want to clean your eyes off. Using lacquer thinner and a Q-tip and or an X-Acto knife or whatever to scrape the paint off. Are you trying to get my airbrush? It's got paint's gray. I got about 40 pounds of pressure. I've got my blue thing down enough where it will blow smoothly. Uh, my, my paint's gray color. Right here. So uh, it's about half, half lacquer thinner, but well, actually retarder. And you want more lacquer, uh, it's about half lacquer thinner, uh, a little bit of retarder in it, and then paint gray. What I'm going to do is go in between where the waddles are going to be painted red and I can actually see it. So I'm going to go in here with about, oh, I guess a medium coat or so. You can go kind of dark because you're going to paint over it anyway with a blue lighter color. You can kind of see what's going on there. Around here is going to get it. Don't worry about getting it on the eyes. You kind of want to go up, there's like these creases. You want to go up in there with it with this paint gray. Just uh, kind of realize what you're doing there.
right in here. You're getting that cheek, that cheek muscle, all that. It's a pain's gray, remind you. You might want to just there's other colors going over the top of this. I'd go, I don't know, fairly dark. I mean, it looks good like it is, but you got to remember. I'm going to go over again with some other colors. We do the other side the same way. Back here you can see I don't know if you have good light in there, but you can see go in between about a medium coat.
a lot of times you can see where it kind of, kind of comes down. Yeah, I'm applying a medium coat, not too dark. See, you'll still you still make the the red, uh, I guess the red streak which is puffed up, you know, like on a turkey head. So you can. Uh, Kind of imagine it where it comes out. Here again, it's my paint spray. Right up here below this, you know it's wide on top of the head. Here's some of that color up from there. Up here. here. Between these waddles. I mean, you can see them really pronounced on this head. You can see the paint gray. See the, the the stuff that's up, it's kind of rised up off the surface. That's what gets red. And down and deep in the uh, the grooves, I guess you could call them. That's where you get your shadowing and your light blue and all that. But it makes for a good effect. That's so going in between all these bottles and everything. Been a while since I've done one, but yeah, there's you can find directions on you know taxidermy websites and stuff. I'm thinking it could help to see it done sometime. <clears throat> I 
And the good thing is, is right now is you're just laying, you're laying the ground, the foundation, and you're kind of like able to uh, do corrective surgery if you need to. And here again. Yeah, you definitely want to get in between all those. If you can, you know, some of them are yeah, hard to get to. I'm going to put a hair of that right here on here now. But you got to remember, we're still going to put white and stuff like that on it. So, you know, it's still coming up. And how good you want to get with it? Yeah, it's totally up to you. Uh, folks will be able to get some of this stuff. Now remember all this rise up stuff is going to be painted again. So here we do the same to the other side. <sighs> right around the cheeks. Remember this guy is upside down. Get in between those, what we know is going to be red. We'll go ahead and hit it with the paint gray. And there again, take it as far as you want to take it.
can go with them if you want to. Uh, I mean, keep doing that. You know, make them as dark as you want to make them. I like a good coat because I know there's going to be other color, colors going over in it, over it, so it doesn't bother me. So it's kind of whatever you think as far as that goes. Kind of making sure it gets the cheek real good. Basically, where you're putting the dark, you're going to put a light coat of uh, uh, light blue or something on it anyway. This is what I'm getting at. Light blue or red, either one, depending on what your color is. Now, put a light coat of white. You could have went and, and you could have whitened it really good, but I didn't. So it kind of shows that I didn't put it on super good. But there again, I know I'm going to be putting an opaque color over it. You know, a light blue. So, I'll get this finished and I'll show you what we do next. I've also got a Jake here. Same thing with the Payne's Gray. And basically making it look good. Uh, before you put the red and then when you put the red you know it's gonna really look good so that's kind of what I got going on with these I'm gonna put the gill red on so uh, yeah using gill red first then we're gonna use uh, well either ocean blue or uh, turkey blue uh, both in life tone paints and then I got my gill red <clears throat> and if you want to do real good detail work uh, you probably want to take it off and hold it in your hand. But like for showing purposes. I guess what I'm getting at is, yeah, you kind of want to, at all possible, try to control your air spray. There might be other reds that are better than this color. This color always looks kind of purplish to me for some reason. This gill red does. I mean, when you paint over white, it's a little bit of a pinkish look. So you just want to be careful and... Uh, but that's what it's always called for, is gill red. Well, there's other applications too where uh, gill red seems a little pinkish. But sometimes you're limited on what kind of red you can use. And so if it says red will work, you know, I'll use it. Let's see right around here. Now birds are different time of the year, you know, exhibit a little bit different colors, so uh, consider that also when you're painting your bird. possible to paint a bird a little bit too much. Okay, this is a of course this is a flying. And you might want to hold your breath and basically all this white stuff, the white streaky stuff, that's going to be painted a uh,
good thing is it's not the last color so uh, you definitely want to put the color on pretty strong I think on these two places I don't know just kind of follow along and I'll show you what I'm doing good thing is this isn't the last color so Well, I'm going to get this real good and with it red and I'll show you what it looks like. Now you want the red pretty strong on there, I guess, when you get the right color. You don't want pink by any means. I'll get this done and uh, let's see. You may want to fade with the red as you get close towards the walls there. They usually the good reference pictures kind of give you an idea of what you want. We'll get it worked out. Let's see. Yeah, kind of faded all the colors out as they get towards the bottom here. Uh, use a good reference picture, you know, like of a fine turkey, it might help you out well. And you have to move the turkey a little bit because you'll paint everything, you know, from one angle. And of course, you got you might have to. I don't know exactly what you call them, not wobbles, but these little uprisings. Well, you got to hit it from the, you know the one way and at least another way too. So, kind of like hitting it from both angles. you want to hit it from the other side as well. <clears throat> yeah, I'm a... Kind of hitting the... I 
I think a lot of my problems is I've, I've watered, uh, you know, I've thinned my paint down over the years. Or, well, not over the years, but... I guess what I'm getting at is I'm putting the gill red on here pretty heavy. And, uh... Especially up towards the back. And I'm putting several coats on it. You know, on those big little wall things that's sticking out. I want to make sure they're good and red is what I'm getting at. And you may have to hit it from different angles. So that's kind of what I'm getting at here. If you don't put it on thick enough, the gear red looks pink. So I try to put it on definitely thick enough. And well, this is detail work. You got to hit it from different angles. Uh, let's see. I'm tending to having to hit it from the top and the side and just do whatever you got to do to uh, get those little risings painted on the back. Make sure you paint those. Get those real good. And yeah, this is kind of detail work right here. So like, uh, got to have patience. I'll get all that done, paint all these gill red, make sure you, you know, it's an airbrush. An airbrush only blows one way, so you're going to have to hit it from different angles. Person might could use a, I don't want to say nothing wrong, but I could use a, like a brush, just like a regular paintbrush. But I'm going to get all this detail work and put my red on really good, you know, up on the back and everything real good, and I'll get right back with it. I've got my heel red here. And I'm real good and hard. You know, you can only put it on so, so hard at one time. Definitely want to get those wobbles really good. Get those wobbles really good. Yes. If you can see that, but you may want to put a little tape or something there where the beat connects to the wall, or you can get it off later with a with a Q-tip. But 
pretty much you got uh, more detail work to do. So, uh, yeah, we uh, pretty much know everything. It's got to be white, so. all this stuff that's supposed to be red. Use good reference pictures. But I'll keep doing this and I'll show you what I got when I get done. You can see coming out of here, you can see the I'll keep doing this. Well here's what I got so far. takes kind of a steel hand so I'm going to finish doing all these up here and I'm going to do some up in here uh, <clears throat> I'm going to do all these in here and basically it's going to take close you know relatively close work with my airbrush but you can kind of see what's going on everything that is and I'm also going to paint the snood I may go ahead and do that now. Give it a little bit of. You don't want to go too heavy on this. Let's see, some hardly have any at all. But you can also you can also lighten it back up if you've got to. But yeah. Sometimes the snooze not very dark. It may actually lighten up, you know, after you kill him. And but a lot of times that's what people see. So Let's see. that'll work for me on that one. Every bird's different. Like a little Jake, I'm sure it wouldn't be dark on a Jake. I'm sure it wouldn't be at all. For the, uh... Well, just, uh... That'll work for me, as far as a snood. I don't know if you can see it. 
But yeah, now it's the same thing all over again on these. Now they come around and they kind of die out where the where the red on underneath is. The paint's gray. You want to make sure you put it on heavy. That's probably that might be more crucial than anything because if it doesn't look heavy enough, the red's not going to stick out. It's not going to have that 3D effect. And so you you kind of want to make sure it's on pretty good. But I'll get back with you a little bit later. Okay, I'll get this red. Make sure you connect to the blue, because if you have like a clear spot right there, you're not going to get the right effect. and I'll show you what I got next. Okay, I've got my airbrush. I use a Q-tip of lacquer thinner and just kind of created a little bit of a, where the eyelid is. You know, took some of that paint off. And uh, I'm just putting it on right there. And of course, I do this side the same way. Uh, you know, you just kind of you know, get in there with your airbrush. You would rather have air, you know, overspray on your eyelids than, I mean, on your glass eye, so you just take it off later. Main thing is you get that, uh, get that eyelid, and then you just clean the eyelids off. Okay. Now I've got like a turkey blue, I guess that's what they call it. And I'm pretty much going over all the paint gray I went over before. You know, it gives that real good bluish color on the back of the neck. But basically all the areas, all the areas where you put the paint gray, um, all the areas where you put the paint gray, you just put your turkey head blue and it'll make for a real neat well it looks right and a little bit of the paint's gray kind of will shine through you know all the places where you put it kind of get the idea of what it's going to look like but let's see what we got here Just everywhere you put the paint spray. And you want the paint spray to kind of shine through maybe a little maybe. I don't know, like maybe in the corners or something. Or on the sides. But I'm going to do this to the other ones and put them up where you can see them better. Yeah, here's kind of what I got. Uh, this is the turkey head blue. Uh, looks like 505 turkey blue that's in life tone but pretty much every place where you put the paint's gray and you can even shade the head down with this with this color um, just pretty much going air, over everything that's the paint's gray you know i kind of like those grayish looks on the on the on the birds but you can control it um you know you can angle spray and stuff like that and control how blue your head looks you know on the side I said earlier about the, you know you can go back over this stuff with the off white a little bit you know you can uh, places that might have got it's detail work I mean uh, you might want to sit down and do it or just get a good place where you can do it real good. That's really good detail work. But you know, if you see pictures of the turkeys, have, they have varying colors. And it's not wrong to use a little bit of off light. Okay, you can uh, 
change the value of uh, that blue a little bit. You know, sometimes, you know, sometimes they're a little bit, uh, a little bit more white back there. And it helps use other turkey heads. A lot of times I'll uh, get a company to paint a turkey head or something. And then I'll go off what they do or something. So you do have options. You'll let your reference be your guide. You see, it has a pretty good looking effect, really. You've got to be careful with it, use live reference, and you'll kind of get what you're looking for. What I'm getting at is, uh, yeah, the white can really accentuate the realism of the mount. So feel free to use it wherever you deem necessary. Yeah, it's also a good time to. Tone red down in certain areas, you know, if you got a little bit too happy with your red or whatever. So, yeah, you can... Right now is the time to do it. The white kind of brightens everything up. But I think you still got a little bit of the, uh, I think you still got a little bit of that Payne's gray showing through. I don't know if it's the Payne's gray or the, or the turkey blue, but it's, uh, yeah, it really adds a good effect to it. It's lifelike in the fact that it's, you know, sometimes the red is, you know, not always red, in other words. It's actually had some realism to it. So, but that's what I've got. Makes for a good turkey head. So let your reference be your guide on that. You know, on how much white you want to use. You know, not only, you know, on top of the head, but other places as well. But this is how I paint a turkey head. Okay, I've got that turkey, turkey blue. I've got my turkey blue, got to thin down a little bit. And whoops. Basically, I want to go over all the all the paint's gray with this color. Kind of, I guess you could say, tinting the paint's gray the right way. 
and actually makes for a really good turkey head color, actually. Pretty darn close. You get that like how you think you want it. And then you just do the wands, which I think I've already done these, but you get the idea. Well, you can see everything that's going on. Um, just try to be as careful as you can with it, more than what I am. My problem is I'm trying to do it in front of the camera, and it's uh, messing me up just a little bit. But you can see how it's... Uh, you see what's going on. the blue, the paint's gray, you're painting it. All, all the control of how bright your turkey head is is pretty much with this color. And how clear you want to do the... people I like a kind of a grayish looking head I think they look good I really do they look kind of like that so we got on this side yeah we got this side same thing just kind of tint that paint gray until you get like an awesome color that you like or you know maybe what the turkey really look like that looks pretty good, just like that. And you're also going to go over, uh, you're going to go over all that with white anyway, the head. So I wouldn't worry about the head too much, I don't think. Unless you wanted to, I don't think it hurt to go over. get the very tip top of the head like right well yeah like right in here thin this stuff down really try to get that real good the same way as you've done the other.
basically what you're doing, you're painting over the paint gray. And it's, uh, it's creating a good effect, really. But you want both sides to match. If you got the head in the same way on one side, you want the same way on the other. Okay, now, now we just paint the top of the head white and use it to tone in a lot of different stuff. But next color is going to be white. In some ways, I'm doing you a disservice by doing it this way, because you actually, it does help to really, uh, you know, to be able to, this is off white, and I'm painting the top of the head. And I like to hit it at an angle, uh, you know, where you're not, you don't want to shoot down and, and uh, I guess the right word is, kill out all the details, you know, down in the bottom of the, bottom of your grooves or anything and so kind of a fix how you want to hit the top of your head you know you put paints gray down there you don't want it to disappear because it looks good so you just hit it in certain ways where it looks really good it looks like a brain almost that's what you want When hit it just right, and it's kind of hard to do with like this, but <clears throat> that's right. I'm only one guy. Let's see, yeah, it's still in there. So just, yeah, just get this right here. Make sure you got plenty of light even better than what this is. Let's see from that angle. Yeah, you want to hit it from an angle where you don't take away from it. I guess is the right word. Hard to do though. see that so let's see. I'd, I'd definitely be doing this if I was holding it in my hand I'd be tapping it a certain way you know you got pieces of skin and stuff coming off but at least it's a something like that so I've got my white I want to hit it at an angle where I don't you know I don't want the details not to show so I'm hitting it like from the back and what have you. Can you see that? No, not really. Oh, I've got some really bad lighting. You can see kind of what, what's going on. Let me go to the other side. Yeah, I've got this light and I'm just hitting it at a certain angle where I'm not taking away from it, if that makes any sense. That kind of defeats the purpose. Let's 
if you're familiar with angle spraying, like on a fish or something, the same thing. You just want to want to angle spray, but you don't want to take take everything out. Is the right word. You already kind of see what's going on anyway. Okay. I'm going to hit it from the rear and shoot forwards. That looks pretty good. Okay, and uh, sometimes if you want, you can lighten the back up. Depends on. You know, maybe keep some of them, but then uh, let your turkey head be your guide. You know, kind of like how you want it. You've got white now. And uh, show you what we do next. Yeah, if you want to lighten him up a little bit, you can even go in between the walls with your white. Yeah, right here, that's kind of what I'm shooting for. You can see the details on the top of the head where it's got the creases. You know, you don't want to paint straight on top and, and make all those disappear if you can keep from it. And that's a really good example of uh, how I like to do one. Well, as with any animal that you do, you want to make sure you... Uh, And get that paint off the eyes. Um, here again, just lacquer thinner on a q tip and maybe an exacto knife, you know, in those tight edges. Just use the end of the blade and it'll it'll come right off. So yeah, that's how it works. You just uh Do it like that, and uh, I'll get back with you shortly. Okay, I got an exacto knife. I'm getting, you know, right up there, up to the close as I can, scraping that paint off. Yeah, this paint comes off. Yeah, it dries, it comes right off. So, uh... So just do that. Just, uh... Get up as close as you can to the, uh, to the eyes. Or to the skin. And then just kind of blow it out. And I just put a light coat of gloss over it. Satin sheet gloss. Make sure the eyes are real good and light, wild, uh, good and wet looking. You don't want it real, real glossy looking, just, uh, just kind of like to protect it a little bit, you know, kind of blend everything together. birds, I like to put a good wet look on them.
Well, there you have it. <clears throat> I think this one turned out pretty good. Uh, still got to clean the eyes off a little bit. But that's how you do a turkey head, or how you paint a freeze-dried head, or any head, actually, for that matter.